Joining us now, Hans von Spakovsky. He's a senior fellow at the Heritage Foundation. He's also a manager with the Election Law Re- Reform Initiative and the former commissioner for the Federal Election Commission from 06 to 07. So who better to talk to about what's happening in this election in 2020? Hans, welcome back to Mornings on the Mall. Always a pleasure to have you. Mary, thanks for having me. All right, so there's so much going on, but I want to talk, start off talking about Michigan, where Wayne County, you had this this back and forth. You have two Democrats, two Republicans, who are the uh, the commissioners who have to certify the vote in Wayne County, home of Detroit. And the two Republicans earlier this week were saying, no, we're not certifying this vote. They felt that there were problems with the vote and they didn't feel it should be certified. Democrats came after them whole hog. We saw some of the Zoom calls. Some of that was, was, you know, they were being called racist. They were being called names. Their names were said over and over again. They felt threatened. The call goes dark. We come back from the call and the two Republicans now say, "Okay, we're going to certify the vote, but we want an investigation into this. We want this to by the secretary of state for Michigan. We want them to look into what happened in Wayne County. Then we find out that they're not going to look into what happened in Wayne County. The secretary of state is not going to do that. So now these two Republicans are now rescinding their prior vote, both signing affidavits, saying that I fully believe the Wayne County vote should not be certified. What is going on here and how important is it that they have now said they will not certify the uh, the county, the vote without an audit? Well, that's very, very important because Detroit uh, is uh, one of the places where, remember, uh, this is one of the places where they not only uh, locked out observers to watch the opening, processing, and counting of absentee ballots, but they even papered over the windows so that no one can see what was going on inside. And Part of the affidavit, apparently, that um, has been filed by these these two Republican commissioners is that uh, the the counts, they didn't think the counts matched. And that sounds like what they're saying is that there were more there were more votes being counted than uh, individuals who actually checked in and voted. It, it's unclear exactly what they mean, but there's enough problems there that uh there clearly needs to be an audit and investigation. Detroit, by the way, is the same place that was sued more than a year ago by the Public Interest Legal Foundation because their voter rolls were in such poor condition uh, because they just Detroit just refuses to clean them up and take people off who've died and moved away. That, like I said, they they got sued over it. Yeah, and these guys, these Republicans, uh, seem to indicate in these affidavits that they were under a deluge of threats for daring to ask any questions about the integrity of the vote there. And in fact, suggested that the only reason they even certified this to begin with was the expectation that at the state level, the secretary of state would do a further audit of what was going on in Wayne County. Now they're being told, no, no more audits coming. So they want to essentially, I guess, rescind their certification because they feel like Democrats in the state of Michigan reneged on the deal, Hans. Well, that doesn't surprise me that they did. But look, here here's the issue that we all have to wonder about. Did they lock people out and did they paper over uh, the windows because they simply were opening up the absentee ballot envelopes and counting them without actually verifying the voter, verifying the information, making sure it complied with state law because they just assumed, hey, any votes coming in from this area are inevitably going to be for Biden. Is that what happened? Is that what they're trying to hide? Well, we don't know, but we ought, we need to find out. Well, this is the same place where affidavits have been signed that that allege that these absentee these ballots were coming in these paper ballots absentee ballots were coming in and if you couldn't find the voter's name on the voter rolls or the supplemental roll for the people who registered late that they were told to just add them on. And they put their both birth date as one one nineteen hundred, and they said we'll get back to those and and we'll 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 deal with those later. But you just need to count those now and just put them in the logs. Yeah, see that supports the idea that they weren't interested in actually verifying that these were real voters, that they were registered voters. They were just counting ballots because, like I said, they knew the more ballots they got in Detroit, the greater the chances that uh, Biden would win the election. Uh, Hans, Georgia is undergoing a recount, a hand recount. And as they do that, they keep discovering that there are thousands of ballots that are on flash drives and things that weren't counted originally. 
Um, it seems that the Georgia officials are basically saying, well, for the most part, we got it right. It looks like you know pretty close to the original <laughs> count. I, I don't think for the most part really cuts it, though, does it? No, it doesn't. It doesn't give you a lot of confidence when during a recount they found uh, over 5,000 unreported votes. And it's everything from memory cards. And what they're talking about is, you know, they have all electronic voting machines throughout Georgia. And what's supposed to happen at the end of the evening is they go to the back of each voting machine and they take take out this, this memory stick. And it's got the recorded vote for everybody who voted on that machine that day. And they've got to get every single one of those to total up the votes. And obviously, they missed some of the machines, which doesn't say a lot about the election officials of those particular counties. Now, how easy is it, though, to switch out those memory sticks? That if someone has another memory stick with a totally different vote count on it, let's say they're, for whatever reason, they're working for one team or the other. How easy is it to just switch that stick out? Well, if you can get a hold of uh, a blank memory stick and then use a machine to to total up votes, I guess you could do it. But th- that would take quite a bit of planning ahead of time. Now, I, I, I was I was just curious, you know, and George's. Georgia's deadline to certify is tomorrow. They've got to get this figured out by tomorrow. That doesn't bode well, at least I don't think it bodes well for the Trump campaign and their their crusade here to to point out voter fraud. <clears throat> Again, over 9,000 votes were, were in a mistake that was made for Joe Biden. They overcounted Joe Biden's votes by over 9,600. They made an oopsie. And that count was certified by two people. It wasn't until the recount where someone found the mistake. So two people certified an almost 10,000 vote mistake in Joe Biden's favor. That doesn't put a lot of faith to me in any of this. Well, it doesn't. Plus, uh, the same person who... uh I tweeted out about that uh, as one of the GOP officials also said that, again, during the recount, they were being limited to one observer for 10 different tables right. where they were doing the recount, which makes absolutely no sense uh, because there's no way they can monitor what's happening at each table. And and from a COVID-19 perspective, that's no excuse. If If two staffers are allowed to sit at a table to recount votes as long as they're wearing masks, why in the world can't the observer be at the very same table following exactly the same rules for the staffers? Keeping them away, again, uh, COVID-19 is not a sufficient excuse for Hans, that. Hans, the people who certified the vote, the people who actually signed off, yeah, this is accurate. It's quite obviously not accurate, and now we're finding out it's, it was broken. Um, and they're, they, they wrongly counted nearly 10,000 votes for Joe Biden there. Is there any legal recourse? Is this a state-by-state question? I mean – wouldn't you want to hold somebody legally accountable if they're uh, fraudulently, falsely, clearly, wrongly certifying a vote count? It's a state-by-state issue, and unless it was intentional, if it was just accidental, they made a mistake, uh, no, they're not going to be held responsible. Yeah. No prosecutor is going, to, is going to prosecute them. But, look, the, the biggest thing people need to understand is that this recount is – it, it can find votes like these that they forgot to count, but it's not going to find fraud. In other words, if there are just as a hypothetical, look, if there are 5,000 aliens, non-citizens registered to vote in the state and they voted in the election, this isn't going to find them because they're not actually going back and checking the voter registration list and verifying, for example, citizenship information. All they're doing, if, that, if those aliens cast a ballot, Uh, it gets counted. So that kind of fraud just isn't going to dig up.